it's very rare to read a leading lady part that doesn't isn't necessarily a leading lady. So she's very um, timid and quite shy and a bit awkward and um, and has a voice inside her that's very very strong and and witty and funny and um, self assured. But she hasn't yet found it, and so very very gently it kind of emerges. I'd like to say a very big thank you to the team at the Mayor's Office, to uh, Film London, our partners in this presentation, and also Lionsgate, uh, who work with us on a number of presentations across the festival, and they're very great partners of ours, so thank you, Lionsgate. Uh, it's now a very great pleasure to introduce you to a man who has already demonstrated his great vision and commitment to arts and culture in London and to someone who uh, champions inclusion in a way that the festival uh, feels we are very aligned with. Will you please join me in making very welcome to the stage the Mayor of London, Sadiq Khan. Thank you uh, very much, and thank you very much for uh, supporting the 60th BFI, BF, BFI London Film Festival. 245 films in 14 cinemas over 12 days, the finest film festival in the world. And I'm really, Woo. I'm really pleased and uh, proud for the Mayor's Gala we've chosen their finest, a brilliant woman director. And isn't it great to have a woman in the lead? Yeah. Set in the greatest city in the world. Yeah. And you know, from Skyfall to Sliding Doors, from Harry Potter to The Hitchhiker's Guide, from Nil by Mouth to Notting Hill, we are the greatest city to make films. We have the world's greatest actors, the world's greatest technicians, the world's best special effects. We have the world's best scenery. We have the best studios. And of course, we have the world's greatest audiences. I want to thank Film London for the help they've given us in making sure the world hears three words, particularly post-Brexit. London is open. You know, for, for more than a thousand years, we've been open to people, to ideas, and to talent. And I promise you this, that's not going to change. But can I just end by saying this, the BFI uh, and the London Film Festival is so important because the power of film is crucial, showing ourselves and others what a wonderful city we are, but how brilliant we are. We don't simply tolerate each other, but we celebrate and we embrace and we respect each other. So thank you for your support to the best film festival we've ever had. Thank you for your support to the finest film festival in the world and enjoy their finest. Thank you. On a personal note as well, I would like to uh, do a very big shout out to our Deputy Mayor for Culture, Justine Simons, who's in the audience tonight, who's been a great champion of the festival for many years. And we are thrilled by your promotion, Justine, so congratulations. And now an even bigger pleasure to welcome to the stage the producers of this evening's film, Stephen Woolley, Amanda Posey, and Elizabeth Carlson. Um, <clears throat> I'll be as brief as I can. I've got this piece of paper so I can go fast, not to slow everything down. I just want to thank, first and foremost, on behalf of Amanda and Elizabeth and Fanola Dwyer, um, the missing producer tonight, um, Claire, and the LFF, and the Mayor of London for inviting us tonight. Finally, a mayor I actually voted for, which is <laughs> really heartening. Um, I also want to thank Pinewood Pictures. Um, we managed to squeeze our little film in between Star Wars on their stage there. And thank you so much for supporting us and the Welsh Film Board and the, the Welsh Finance that we got for the movie. 
Um, thank you very much to Ziggy and Nick and the Lionsgate team who've been supporting British cinema now for over a decade. And they've been stalwart and incredible and um, I don't know what we do without them. Thank you so much, Lionsgate. Um, a special big thank you to the BBC, um, to Christine Langan, to Ed Weatherhead, who really pursued this project with us as partners from the first word to the final cut. Um, and they were incredibly supportive. Thank you also to the BBC for showing us all these great movies when I was a kid growing up. And all those films starring John Mills and... <laughs> I, they were the inspiration for Lissa's wonderful book and for Gabby's wonderful script. And um, I really don't know where we'd be without the BBC. Um, this film has been a thrilling experience for Amanda and I, um, not only working every day with directors gifted and talented as Lerner Scherfug and an incredible task, but also making a film about a time when cinema is so important in people's lives, in their everyday lives. Um, we feel as producers and directors that film is life or death. Well, in fact, it's actually not. But when they made these films, it actually was. Um, so it was a thrill to make a film about filmmakers who were uh, making movies that were so important when 30 million people a week were going to the cinema. Um, it was a great privilege to make this movie and I, I just hope some of that rubbers off in the film. It's partly a tribute to Carol Reed and David Lee and Michael Powell and Ealing and all those filmmakers who uh, worked at that time and made those great movies that we all remember so well. Um, but it's really also a tribute to the women who worked on those films, the writers, the actresses, the people who helped shape those movies. Um, and there was a little bit of a revolution going on when women finally given the chance to participate in every walk of life, including cinema. So um, it was great to be part of the team that made that film and great to be um, one of the producers of a film that is so, as we just heard, such a great part of London. Thank you. Thank you, Stephen. It's now a very big pleasure to introduce the director of this evening's film, someone who uh, returns to the UK for a fifth time, her most recent British production being Riot Club, of course, and was last at the festival with an education. Will you please join me in making very welcome Lona Scherfig. I'd like to bring on our storytellers, the book where it all started, uh, written by Lissa Evans, who's here with us. And the superb adaptation by our wonderful screenwriter, Gabby Chappie. It is such a joy, and this I couldn't imagine a better time or place for this film. I feel really grateful, Claire. Uh, I so agree with the mayor that this city is the best, and your films are extraordinary. And after having made this film, I love it all the more, uh, especially because of the script and especially because of the producers. I owe a lot to... Both of you, all of you, especially Stephen, because Stephen thinks he was alive during the London Blitz. <laughs> and he, he knows how many steps that be at the Holland Park station. He knows everything about filmmaking. He understands your problem. He appreciates your solutions. He's, um, he's a real producer, uh, and so are both of you. Benola, all the executives, I've been really uh, fortunate. And I got to work with a fantastic cast, Gemma Arterton, who I've always wanted to work with. <laughs> and Sam Claflin. <laughs> who I, it's been such a joy to work with again. And Bill Nye. We have a lot of the cast here tonight, which makes it even more festive. Rachel Sterling. <laughs> Richard E. Grant. Henry Goodman. 
And the cast of the film within the film, Hubert Burton, Stephanie Hyam, Marcus, Patrick Gibson, Julia Davis, and then the core of the story, the twins, Francesca and Lily Wright. I'm just going to encourage everyone to step away from the screen. <laughs> we want to show a film, a very wonderful film on that screen. Thank you all so much for being here. And uh, Lona, I'm just going to ask you um, a, a little bit about uh, how you came to the film. And also, because this is a film, again, where you go into the psyche of British people. And what is that that attracts you uh, as a director? It, I read the book a long time ago and then uh, heard that it was going to be filmed, then went on to do the Riot Club, then found out that the Amanda and Stephen, I think maybe you sent it to me originally, uh, and that the, the project was still there, then I fought to get the job, especially because of what Gabby wrote. Uh, and what I liked so much and like so much about working here is that you can try and be very funny and very emotional at the same time and people will think it's all right. <laughs> <laughs> and it's everywhere in this. It's in uh, the courage to, to do something, create something in such a horrific, uh, dramatic world that still has the lightness of, of your material. It's the incredibly musical, um, uh, uh, sociable, kind, mild, witty actors who, always, who also have the courage to sometimes leave the humor alone and be more emotional at times in this film. And it is working with all these actors that I didn't knew, that didn't know, that have contributed in many, many ways with the many, many details and this dense, complex script and help made it light and clear and something that I'm really proud of and um, that I hope you'll enjoy. Thank you. Gemma, I'm, I'm going to ask you, the, the audience uh, is about to see, I think, an incredibly uh, brilliant performance from you and inhabiting a role that I genuinely love, which is uh, a woman who, uh, in the context of a, a very troubled time, uh, finds uh, a way to hope towards her own liberty. And I just wonder if you could talk a little bit about your attraction to her character. Um, so I play Catherine Cole, who's a screenwriter, sort of falls upon it. And, um, and she's uh, Welsh. I <laughs> apologize in advance for my accent. Um, and, uh, but she, but she, what I really loved about her is that it's very rare to read a leading lady part that doesn't, isn't necessarily a leading lady. So she's very um, timid and quite shy and a bit awkward and... Um, and has a voice inside her that's very, very strong and, and witty and funny and um, self-assured, but she hasn't yet found it. And so very, very gently it kind of emerges. And that's what I really loved about it. It's very gentle. It's so nice to do gentle stuff. Um, um, and yeah, and it was a really, I mean, Stephen touched upon it in his speech, but um, it was such an incredible time for women. Suddenly, you know, they were given jobs that, um, you know, uh, working in factories, building planes, flying planes, you know, driving trains and buses. And, and it was a real time of liberation. Really, it was sort of the beginning of feminism in the UK and, um, and a real discombobulating time as well for women because they kind of weren't used to that sort of position. Um, and I think that you kind of see that very gently in this film. Um, such a great backdrop to, to shoot a film about, about what was going on in London and, um, and for women, but very, very gently done. And that's a real credit to Lissa for kind of coming up with the idea. Um, and Gabby, of course, for the script. Um, so I hope you enjoy that aspect of it. Thank you. And Sam, can I ask you, we're seeing... Um, you uh, play a character in a very productive time. I mean, Stephen's um, touched on it in his introduction for, for actual film production in London. And did, did you do sort of research as a cast into that period? Uh, yeah, we all, <laughs> all together, all of us. Uh, no, I, mean, I think it was, it, it was a real insight for me into a world that I wasn't 
overly familiar with. I, my, my knowledge of films, especially dating back to the 1940s, is very, very, very limited. Um, but Stephen, of course, sort of threw a few titles at us, and there were, there were a few opportunities for us to sit down as a cast and uh, as a crew and, uh, you know, eat on my own. Um, sorry, Laura, my wife was un unfortunately sometimes subjected to sit through um, some films at the time. And I think, do you know what, it's, 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 it's a different world. It's, it, you know, we, we watch these films nowadays and we kind of go, oh my God, that's so hammy. But at the time, they were so relevant and so um, uh, sort of uh, influential in so many inspiring ways. And I, th I think having the opportunity to portray a character who is and lives and breathes that um, was was really quite uh, interesting and new and challenging in many ways. Um, yeah, uh, it, it was it was an incredible, insightful experience. Thank you. And uh, lastly, Bill, you get to play an actor, and there's so much playfulness in and pleasure in this performance for you. I'm uh, I'm, I'm interested in how you came to that role. <laughs> how dare you! <laughs> Um, they were looking for someone to play a chronically self-absorbed, pompous actor in his declining years. <laughs> and they thought of me, <laughs> which is easier to process on some mornings rather than others. I'd like to also just take a moment to thank everybody from leaving the safety of their homes during the Marmite crisis. <laughs> These are, these are uncertain times. <laughs> Is this the moment for Marmite jokes? I'm not sure. I don't. Uh, I'm very proud to be in the movie. I adore Lorna Scherfig. I love working with Stephen Woolley and Amanda Posey and everyone else on this stage with me. The cast that you're looking at is a credit to those people that they could assemble such a cast. I love the film. I love the script. I love London. This is not PR. I, li <laughs> I live in London. I'm, I'm, and the fact that we should get this screening, this gala performance for this film is obviously, there is symmetry there. That's a perfect situation. And thank you very much for coming. Well, I am very confident that there is not going to be a Marmite reaction to this incredibly superb film. Will nice. you please join me in congratulating and thanking the team from their finest.